So now we have this model on the canvas. Get your model and mask them out and make sure you put them on a darker background. I have a little bit of a blue tint just cause when you get more dark and cinematic, you get a little bit more blue tint on the overall image and overall model. Dark blue background, low saturation. First thing we're gonna do with this model is we're gonna bring the curves down from the model to somewhat match this background. So just find a nice midpoint and don't do, go too crazy with curves. You just need a little bit of darkness. And then I'm gonna bring down the highlights somewhat as well. I don't wanna fade them out too much like that. I wanna keep them still balanced, but bring down the highlights, bring down the shadows, even. Next, I'll also add a hue and saturation. I'm gonna desaturate him a little bit to match as well. Not all the way. And lastly, we'll add some color balance to get him to get in this scene of a little bit more blue. Now with those three layers, already a big difference. This is like him standing there if there were no, no rim lights, no light source, anything like that. With a model like this as well, you have pretty harsh highlights. It just depends on your photo. You could always go to select color range, then you can choose your highlights. Choose a range of highlights. If you don't know what I'm doing, I have a video called select color range, select highlights, where I show you guys how I do player retouching with this method. So I'll link that as well as we go through this. You guys will see it on the screen but I'm gonna select some highlights here with a range and this is my preview. And that looks like a pretty good preview for the highlights. Hit okay. You can actually bring these back and add another curves layer. And then you can just bring down these highlights even a tad more so that you can have more control on where you wanna put the highlights. So let's add in a light source and we'll, let's just keep the color going with what he has for his jersey. So I'm gonna add a yellow light source and notice that the brightness is not too high and it's also not too saturated so stay around somewhere in the middle of saturation and brightness you don't have to do anything too crazy especially in the first step of just creating your light source you can put this on screen blending mode invert the mask with control i and then you're going to paint white where light is coming from in this scene and see how i didn't don't make it too bright and you still get you still get the point of where the light's coming from. I don't have to make the light source too bright. You can always, since it's a solid fill color, you can always double click on the thumbnail right here and then raise it as you see fit. Now is the next step where we actually start thinking about lighting and thinking about where it should be. Now you look at this model and you're saying, okay, the rim light, if the light source is to the left of him or to the right of him, if he was actually standing there saying where the light source is, you know, to the right of him. Yes, they're going to have a lot of rim light on the edge and maybe a little bit on the face, but we have to think about this more dimensionally and really draw the light. Just take a color that is different from everything around. And what you're going to do is you're just going to paint. You're going to paint areas that should be lit from this light source right here, right? So what's good about this in practicing, I think that you can use something that already has some pretty harsh highlights um, that were originally on there. And you're going to just draw the places where you believe that the light is going to hit the most intensely. And over time, you're just going to get better with this. But just practice where you think that the light source is going to be hitting. And uh, something that you can use is called the Asaro head. I will link a photo or I'll just put a photo on the screen of a sorrow head. You can use that as a reference as to how pl planes on the face are shaped. This is something that a lot of sculptors will use or people that draw a lot, they'll use the Asaro head, especially in the beginning when they're first learning lighting. So just think about where light's gonna be most intense on him. You know, you're gonna get a little bit on the nose as well. And then just follow follow uh, your your guide markers as to where the light already was. Really, that can help. 
don't be afraid to make a mistake you're gonna make plenty of mistakes in art and I, th I hope that you guys take this video as a study as well quick plug to patreon i will link this whole project file for you guys and it'll be available for all my patreon supporters so i appreciate you guys supporting me over there you guys get access to mostly all my project files really even my client work and a lot of fsu work live stream playbacks texture and asset packs monthly and more so check out the patreon castle scoped as we continue All right, so once you have your, I'm just gonna call this the lighting outline. Now you're gonna take your lasso tool and, well not your lasso tool, let's take the human saturation, let's colorize him, clip it to him, let's turn it on linear dodge and bring the saturation up and also the brightness like so and he's really bright so what can we do let's do blending options and let's get that hold down alt or option on the mac and you're going to drag to get a separated bracket and a nice blend on the skin or subject and we're going to invert that mask and follow what we had made for this roughly with the pen with the polygonal lasso tool so i take in the polygonal lasso tool and now i'm going to trace along the way i could also just figure that i want to make some more and that's okay you don't have to stay strict to the sketch once you have a pretty good selection now what you're going to do is on this inverted mask the inverted hue and saturation mask you're going to Make sure you're painting with white and then you're gonna hold down alt or option on the Mac and hit delete. Now this is gonna make your outline of your highlights just like that and look at that. It looks really good. I'm gonna go in and add a couple more that I have seen that I think should be lit and more parts. like so get creative with your shapes as well with this don't think don't make every shape the same the same path that just looks boring and that's when you get your lighting that looks dull and photoshoppy and not professional photoshoppy <laughs> so there we go with our lighting right there what you're going to do next is add a little bit of feather to the selection and you're also going to just adjust the light values and now you're gonna go with a brush hardness put your hardness to zero and your size down and you're gonna start fading this light so it's not as harsh and it starts blending more to the character so bring your flow down as well So just paint ever so softly and notice that I'm just using the mouse one because I don't know where my pen tablet pen is Two because I was like, okay, I can't find my pen tablet. I'm just going to show you guys how to do this with just the mouse and show that it is definitely possible. Even if you only have a mouse. So this is all mouse, no pressure sensitivity and yeah, it's definitely doable. All right, so on the face, I was going to use the, I was going to use this and you could, but I'm going to try out what's called the concept art brush pack. And I have a brush that I had titled the hairbrush. If you guys don't have this pack, it's in the description and it's just called concept art brush pack. The hairbrush originally is called pelt. So once you get the pelt brush, just change it to hair and this will work really well, especially if you're only using 
uh, your mouse for the hair lighting. And look at that before and after guys. Boom. Big difference. All from the lighting outline that really helped to illustrate the direction of light and the feathering light that I needed to get this just looking really nice. Second thing we're going to add is a, you can either add another hue and saturation or you can also, I'll show you guys how to just do this with screen blending mode. So you put the color on screen and then we're going to change it to this yellower tone. And this one, this light source, we're not going to have any blending options. So we're just going to invert this one and this is going to be like our brightest highlights. So this is going to be your brightest highlights on the subject and you're really just gonna paint on the outside just very carefully and very cleanly on the outside to get your brightest highlights on there. Lighting, this is where most people would stop and you'd be at a pretty good point, honestly, but I wanna show you guys some options that you can try out and utilize and see how you can push this even further. You can always play on the curves, right? And bring a little bit of brightness back if you'd want to. So from this curves layer, if I want to bring back a little bit of the highlights on the outside, that's a quick, easy way to do it. What I like to do is also bring back highlights on the eyes. I like to keep the eye pretty bright in most cases. It just gives, it gives more life to the subject and the scene overall, in my opinion. So I'm adding a brightness layer that's still clipped over the top, inverting that. And then let's add that brightness back. You can see this little reflection inside of the eye. All right, so if we peel these layers back, here was the original model, just like that. And then we go ahead and add all of our little adjustments to make him really come to life and making the model our own. If you guys liked this video and enjoyed, be sure to drop a comment, share this with a friend because a lot of people have trouble with lighting and they're always curious about lighting, especially with only the mouse. So make sure to share this with a friend, subscribe to the channel. It's been Calso Scope. Let me know what videos you want and subscribe to Patreon as well. I'll be putting this project file up there. There's always going to be new packs monthly, things that I'm working on throughout my career as an artist. So consider supporting the Patreon link is below in the comment section. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Stay scoped. Peace.